Um, okay, welcome to this Informatics Europe's uh, webinar today. Uh, my name is Gregor Engels. I'm a member of the Executive Board of Informatics Europe and uh, it's your treasure. And I'm happy uh, to have today Gerti Kappel here as a speaker in our webinar series on uh, gender equality in informatics. We do this in uh, cooperation with the uh, European uh, Coast Action, the UGAIN project, and um, maybe later about more about this. So I welcome you all. I see at least one participant, uh, maybe there is a second one. And uh, anyway, um, we are happy to have you here. So a few words about Informatics Europe um, before we start with the talk by Getty. So we are started in 2005 with our organization, and it is an information an organization which is um, intended to bring together uh, informatics leaders, uh, especially heads of um, departments, but also heads of research groups in computer science or informatics. And in this way, we represent the public and private research community of informatics and uh, in Europe and neighboring countries. And um, sometimes we say we are kind of the voice of informatics uh, in Europe. So our members are really um, not individuals, but departments, institutes, faculties, uh, and so on. And as you can see here from this slide, uh, in the meantime, we are spread all over Europe. We have um, more than 170 institutions in more than 30 countries. So at the end, it's something like uh, 45,000 researchers and more than 500,000 students, which are reached by our uh, initiatives and by our webinars and by our offering uh, to the community. So if you uh, would like to know more about us, uh, it's always good to go to the <clears throat> official website of Informatics Europe. And uh, if you are a member of Informatics Europe, this means that uh, you are um, working in one of the departments who are member of Informatics Europe, you are invited to contribute um, to the work we are doing. In particular, we have a lot of working groups, uh, as you can see on the left-hand side, like for educational research, for ethics, um, for women in research and education, the WIRE, the open science, about data analysis and reporting, sustainability and policy recommendations. This shows also what we are mainly doing. We are, on one hand, we are collecting data about um, um, informatics uh, institutions, um, about um, graduate students or degrees and so on. There's a nice portal where you can find all this uh, information. And we have yeah, topics, um, hot topics in computer science informatics where we have working groups and people meet there and discuss and um, write reports and so on. So we closely work together, as I already mentioned, um, with the UGAIN. Uh, we are even coordinating this uh, uh, European Coast Action. And we are, I have some other projects you see here, and uh, especially also in the education area, we work together with Informatics for All. We are even a member of the uh, initiator of this. And we also work closely together with Vienna, with the Digital Humanities, with Hannes Wertner, uh, who is leading it there um, under the guidance of the Dean of the Faculty. This means Gerti Kappel. Um, so uh, as I said, if you like, would like to know more, go to the website and you'll find more information there. So um, really important is uh, our annual conference uh, this year in Edinburgh, uh, end of October. This is the, 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 the meeting of all these people who are somehow responsible for uh, informatics in their department, in their faculties, uh, maybe as research leaders, kind of family event where we have uh, special workshops and for the leaders, but also for the young people. So we have this early career researchers workshop where we bring together people who are doing a PhD or even have a postdoc and um, so they can exchange their experiences, they can um, yeah, discuss uh, common ideas and so on. We also um, are in close contact to industry uh, because the people uh, at industry are very much interested in what we are doing. On the one hand side, uh, because we are speaking about innovative uh, topics. On the other hand, we are educating people which might become later employees in this industrial context. So um, if you... Um, um, think about doing something really useful this year, then come end of October to Edinburgh to our European Computer Science Summit um, this year in Edinburgh. Um, yeah, I always say we have this working group, we also have kind of different services, and then the important services that we have different awards um, for uh, education and uh, for other things. In this time, we have uh, for the first time this year 
the uh, an award for um, for PhD for good PhD. Um, and um, I think there are one or two days uh, the, it's possible to submit a proposal and uh, again go to our websites and, and also what we have here in, a new initiative for services is CV repository so where young people can upload their CV on the other hand uh, industrial or academic partners uh, have a look at this and so we have a kind of, uh, of matching platform to bring people um, who are looking for work together with people who are looking for work looking yeah, for people and uh, offering work. So you can see here uh, different um, possibilities um, to benefit of the work we are doing at Informatics Europe. Um, so go at our web page, uh, follow us uh, on the different uh, social channels as you can here. See, and uh, again, a link to this UGAIN, um, there's a separate website about this, uh, a course action we are also coordinating so, and this is also what we heard here, here today by Gerti is in this context of the um, coast action, um, which is a running project. Okay, so now we come to the um, slide of today. Uh, as you can see here, we will have uh, two talks in the near future. One is today, one is on July 10th. And um, so Gerti Kappel, um, yeah, so since, since some years, professor at the Technical University of Vienna, um, she is well known in, um, I think in the whole world for her work in uh, model-based software engineering. And um, but since um, the early days, she's also um, active in a political sense. Um, let's say being as a representative of the department of the being. I think currently you are dean, Gerti. Maybe you say a few words about this. And um, and still not being. I mean, uh, a minister in Austria, but this may be the future. Uh, so, Getty, <laughs> we are happy to have you here today, where you speak about um, yeah several STEAM support activities. Later, what have we learned? So, I know that you have been one of the first, uh, yeah, in this case, women who were fighting for more women um, in our education system in computer science, but also in our uh, PhD programs and postdocs. We are really interested in having more women. I think you have been um, really very successful in Vienna. So we are happy to have you here today and um, want to listen to your talk. I stop my sharing and uh, let you share your slide. So do you see my slides now? Yes, I see. And I go to the presentation mode. Very good. So should work. Yes. Very good. Uh, thank you for your nice words. <laughs> and yeah, we have to admit uh, we know each other since a couple of days <laughs> and That's years, true. Gregor yeah. and myself. <laughs> um, thank you um, for the invitation, and it's an honor to present the work. Um, I mean, the main reason, I guess, why we have been invited, and this was even more honor, is that we have received the. Uh, um, Minerva Award, also the Faculty of Informatics of TU Wien has re received the um, Minerva Award last year in uh, Hamburg, which was really a, a great experience. And in fact, I will, yeah, I, I will tell you why we got the award um, and also yeah, about our other measures, uh, female support measures and what we have learned over the last years. Um, as Gregor said, I am um, Dean of the Faculty of Informatics. In fact, um, being a Dean means four year, it's a four year period. I'm now in my fourth year. I am the, the first Dean of a Faculty of TU Wien since it's 200 plus plus uh, existence. Um, and um, I always say uh, I, I was not forced to do the job. Yeah, I'm doing it. Uh, because I'm really um, interested in kind of um, guiding also the, uni the, the university, but especially the faculty in this now exciting days. So um, I will start with some uh, statistics that you just get a feeling also um, uh, where we are, uh, uh, where, where is our position in terms of uh, students. And you will see we are as bad as all other um, countries in Middle Europe, 
we have less than um, 20 percent um, female participation both at the beginners and at the um, 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 the, those uh, finishing the bachelor degree. Yeah, you see here the bars are the um, uh, the beginners, and the the line are um, are the uh, alumni. Uh, and what we what is interesting on this slide is also that we uh, you can say we were forced, or you could also say we were allowed to introduce entry exams uh, with the winter term 2016. And um, since 2016, we had to accept 570 before we had to accept all. And since 2019, we have to accept um, uh, 670 students. And um, of course, when you talk about an entry exam, the immediate um, kind of uh, concern is, is it uh, discriminating females? And we were very much looking into this um, entry exam and having it um, analyzed by um, psychologists and, and soci sociologists. And I can tell you the, the, the good news is it's not discriminating um, by sex. It's also not discriminating in terms of the secondary school level, because this is the, the next issue that we, in, in Austria, we have a, a gymnasium like, you know, all the other countries, I would say. But next to that, we have professional schools. That means they, um, end, they take one year longer, but finish next to a kind of this uh, normal abitur or matura, also with a profession mainly in the um, technical areas. And a lot of our beginners are something like 50% of our um, uh, fresh, ma fresh um, persons, fresh men, fresh women, are coming from these uh, professional schools. And they are mainly uh, male. So we were kind of uh, very concerned about if our um, uh, entry test uh, kind of favorizes uh, this cohort, and it, it's not favorizing also in terms of the, or not, discriminating in terms of the uh, secondary school level. Uh, the numbers are not really better at the master level. As also at the master level, we have uh, less than 20% um, female uh, participation. It looks a bit better at the doctoral um, uh, level, at the PhD uh, level. And uh, here it is it, it, it already starts being engineered. Yeah? The success is engineered. What, does, what do I mean with that? We have so-called doctoral, um, uh, specific structured doctoral programs, doctoral schools, doctoral colleges, where, um, which are paid by the uh, university and where there is a, a kind of a quota which we have to fulfill that at least 50% of the positions, of the offered positions, have to be filled by female students. And this was introduced in 2011, this quota. And since then, the amount of female PhD students went up in, um, in our studies. And I can tell you, uh, because I was, you know, when I was young, I was always against water and I have really changed my mind because uh, as a, not only uh, due to the experience with these uh, female PhD students, but also with them, they are not uh, kind of worse than their uh, male counterparts. It's um, mainly the opposite. Um, we got very, very good uh, female um, PhD students from all over the world, from the former Eastern European countries, but as I said, from all over the world, and they are doing uh, quite good. And this is also a um, success story to this end, that meanwhile, there are special programs in Austria to support female researchers doing their habilitation. You know, we still have, in, again, I say in middle Europe, it's, it's, I think it's in the German-speaking part of Switzerland, it's in Germany, 
but something like that also exists, I think, in Italy and in, in, in France. We have this second uh, dissertation, this habilitation. And there are special support programs now in Austria for female researchers. But of course, they have to have done before their PhD. And especially, um, there are a lot of young uh, researchers now having done their PhD with our faculty who know who now get this habilitation program. So it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy here, which is uh, ongoing. This is the slide why we got the Minerva Award. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say. You know, the Minerva Award is um, divides the, the scientific life cycle of a researcher, of a female researcher in uh, into three phases. It's, you know, you have to, to attract the, the females to study and uh, you have to retain them and you have to promote them. And um, last year the, the topic was promotion and this is exactly um, kind of what we, um, what we have done over the last couple of years. As, a, as of uh, um, beginning of March, it was our last uh, kind of hiring started and it was again a, a female full professor we have 25% um, female full professors. We are not as good at the associate level. Yeah? The main reason is that there are a lot of kind of in, bi in bio age terms, old associate professors where there were not any um, support measures, any affirmative actions in place. And we have more than 50% at the assistant professor level. And again, this number is engineered. In engineered in the sense that, as I said, we have special programs for um, uh, in, in Austria for doing an uh, habilitation. And the university put into place that when you get such a grant, such an habilitation grant, you will be offered an um, assistant professorship with tenure track. And when you get special competitive grants, um, at the, of course, at the ERC level, but also at the national level, you are also offered a system professorship with tenure tracks. And uh, third, as a last but not least, we have special positions for as a system professorships um, with tenure track for female researchers, which we announce over the whole area of computer science as a not to a specific topic, as a, like distributed systems or um, 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 cyber physical systems. So they are really announced over the whole area of computer science. But over the last years, we have filled uh, three uh, positions, three um, assistant professorship with tenure track which have been devoted explicitly for females. And I can tell you this makes already starts making a difference because you can imagine that seven out of 13, it means that there are really a lot of uh, fe young female uh, professors, assistant professors around, they are teaching, they are doing their research. So this ma makes also a cultural difference already. What happened so far? And uh, I, and the main reason why I'm kind of here in this uh, honored position telling you um, uh, all the stories is that I was lucky enough to have, in fact, 20 years ago, a female support program, uh, in fact, the largest, uh, I think, of its time in, in Austria, where the main um, goal was to get more highly educated females into computer science and um, also in one of the main subjects and since I acquired this grant this was as in computer science and this was this uh, women's postgraduate college in internet technology you even although this has finished in 2007 you would uh, find the kind of the material still online and the main reason also the main uh, me, goal at that time was to, to um, fulfill three things. First, to have um, females doing their PhD. We had eight positions over the whole area of uh, computer science. The only uh, kind of um, precondition was you had to be a female. 
Secondly, we build up female support measures, doing workshops for pupils, um, having uh, mentoring for the um, fresh woman entering uh, the university and so on. And third, um, we were building up a lecture series where the goal just was to get the best of the best worldwide from research, politics and industry. As for example, we had uh, Jim Gray uh, as a Turing awardee in uh, coming um, uh, to our WIT colloquium and, and so on. And what, what I have, as a lot of my findings, of, um, which I also tell at the end of my presentation was really from that time, is that what, what is really most important is when you build up this support, um, um, the support programs, you really uh, have to ensure first to, to convince even the females that they um, um, accept your support measures. Because a lot of uh, females say, why should I, why do I need a special support? Yeah? My, my male colleagues don't get it and I'm as good as my male colleagues. I, I don't want to be especially put out of, 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 the, of the group. So we have to teach the females that um, they really are worth of support. It's, they are not in need of support, but they are worth of, um, of being supported. That was one um, kind of learning. And the second learning was that the most important things for all these uh, support programs is um, sustainability. It doesn't make a sense to have it only for a couple of years, yeah? because otherwise the next day when this when the funding is over, nobody is caring anymore. You really have to sustain until because it takes really a, a long time to um, develop a certain change. But okay, anyway, we had quite a, a good funding at that time, um, and. What I have over the um, kind of last something like six, seven years built up here. And before being dean, I was already vice dean. So since almost since over the last eight years, I am to a certain extent in charge of this. Uh, uh, we we um, build up a a, and along this line, what. Um, as I said, of this life cycle of a research, attract, retain, promote, uh, we build up at the, at the attract level a special um, program for pupils, as a, for school students, and I will talk about that. We uh, build up also, and this already goes into the re in this retain uh, phase, um, special intro program, so called bridging courses for those male and female who are who can't program and we have some i would say lightweight measures for promotion and sensitizing um, in place so um i, I as a, most of the programs which we have really put a, in fact also a lot of effort and, and money in is really at this a, a attraction level now you might say and still we don't have more than 20% female um, uh, students. This is also a, a learning over the last uh, yeah, dozens of years. It's really very difficult to, although we have to do all these programs, it's very difficult to change our, you know, our culture. We are still living in a very conservative school family um society culture at least i would say in austria i guess germany is, is, is somewhat similar uh, but nevertheless we really have to do this um uh, programs uh, for schools um so what we um have already started as you see here since um, 90, um since the, the late 90s that we have uh, in fact, all universities, all, all, all technical universities or, or technical faculty, faculties do this once a year, end of January, that they invite um, uh, female uh, pupils to, um, to, to their place to uh, introduce them to different technical subjects and, and uh, natural science subjects to do workshops 
and to kind of uh, inform them about the possibilities um, which they have. What we have um, already done in the zero years, and we started again last year, is that we do special um, summer workshops for girls. Also here last year, it was this girls code together. You know, it's always this uh, game with the TU for Technische Universität in, in the world. And um, of course, here the experience is uh, that the, the girls are quite excited about that. Yeah, what uh, everything, what the, the information they get, they just the, the, the you, it's like uh, you, you can put all the information on them and they really take it and, and um, um, are, are quite fond of it. It doesn't mean, of course, that they then start uh, studying computer science, perhaps in a, a couple of years later. But it, one, I think one of the most important parts of this um, school workshops is that we really provide them with the excitedness of um, technology, excited, uh, excitedness about computer science, and that we also change the, the view on computer science. Um, when you see here, it was uh, done in a way of kind of computer science unplugged, and they had um, both about coding and artificial intelligence. And you see also this Boston Dynamics bot uh, as a bit of um, mixed reality um, in information. Uh, and I think especially nowadays where AI is such a huge uh, uh, hype and topic, it is, I think, less difficult to uh, attract um, school classes to this uh, different kind of workshops. What we have also up, built up since 2017 in, in, in an online course um, for um, introduction to programming with processing. And, you know, 2017, this was three years before the pandemic. At that time, it was the first, very first MOOC of the TU Wien, as of this massive open online course. As I mean, why this is almost, you can say, outdated, but um, it is still used as a um, kind of as, as, as the underlying material for our different uh, bridging courses. And um, kind of last but not least, the main part, what we have built up as um, um, interface to uh, schools is uh, a permanent exhibition called Abenteuer Informatik as Excitedness uh, Computer Science, which is from a colleague from the um, TU Darmstadt in, in Germany. And the idea here is really to uh, provide really computational thinking, algorithmic thinking um, examples to the, um, to the students. So it's about uh, um, and, um, encoding, it's about a shortest path, it's about complexity, it's about uh, security, uh, safety issues. So we have um, about 11 topics. Uh, meanwhile, uh, it has really further developed. We have um, uh, topics also on um, um, artificial intelligence, so machine learning, neural networks. We have topics about ethical hacking. Um, mixed, my, mixed reality and um, kind of a robotic programming. And what I'm kind of what I just want to show you here with uh, this slide is that uh, all the, we have started with this uh, exhibition in, in summer term 2019. Of course, then was the pandemic where there was not a lot of, uh, there are not a lot of workshops, but uh, last uh, summer term, than, than last winter term, and when I have here the numbers only for um, for this summer term, only for March, without doing any um, any advertisement. This is really just by you know teachers are coming and they tell their colleagues and so on. We already uh, had almost four thousand students as so until the end of March visiting this exhibition, and here we really I think have at the right time. Provide, uh, have started to provide this information because um, you know, still the um, education in informatics yeah, 
um, is very poor in the schools because although we have the um, we have the special uh, study of becoming a teacher in computer science, it is not really uh, taken. Uh, so there are not there are not a lot of students who are studying becoming a teacher in computer science. Uh, and that means that it, there, there is not a, a lot of knowledge for with the teachers still out there in the in the schools and they are, the teachers are quite happy that we provide this kind of workshops and um, we also provide material to them so that they can then uh, do homeworks and uh, so this is a I would say this, this is really the, the, the most important success story from all the different measures we are doing. Yeah. Um, I was mentioning that we have this MOOC, this um, Massive Open Online uh, course, introduction programming with processing. Processing is a preprocessor to Java, uh, and it is um, mainly used for getting as well for doing some uh, graphical output so you can quite easily say you have uh, you you draw a rectangle and then you let the rectangle um, um, kind of be um, multi multiplied and having it uh, shown like a star and, and, and so on um, and uh, we started with a this, this bridging course in uh, the winter term I have here the numbers only until um, to the winter term 2019, um, but it um, continues quite uh, similar. And what it shows is we started only, with, so first we wanted it only to be offered to uh, females, but we soon realized that also we have male colleagues as a uh, fresh um, uh, uh, freshmen who need this uh, information, because the main reason is as I said at the beginning, depending on their secondary school um, they have um, visited, they either have some pre-knowledge about um, computer science or programming, or they have none at all. And um, so we um, also offered these courses to, uh, to the male colleagues, but you see here in the ratio that mainly as a, from the ratio more females than males are taking the course the main reason being that most of our females are coming from uh, a gymnasium or from such kind of professional schools like uh, where they have a lot of tourism or, or you know accounting uh, and um, as a, but not from a technical a professional schools and uh, what we have um, realized as the effects on the first year and on the whole uh, their study program is, and I know the slides are not the best here, but I just wanted to show is um, how the, uh, this, uh, this bridging course affects the amount of ECTS they do in their first year. And you have here this, the, the broad columns are, you know, the first one is doing nothing, so that zero ECTS, and then zero to, or the one to eight, and and eight to sixteen, and so on. And the, within one column, you always have the left one is with the bridging course, and the right one is without the bridging course. And you see when you, for example, look at um, 16 to 24 ECTS, 24 to 32 ECTS, it, it shows that when you have done the bridging course, you do more uh, um, as in, in, in percentage, uh, more ECTS than when you haven't done the bridging course. Now you can see it's clear because um, when you do the bridging course, it means that you are really engaged, you want to to, from the beginning on, you want to um, uh, kind of uh, follow your your study program, but uh, nevertheless, it, it shows that providing this support uh, pays off. Um, the next slide is perhaps even worse in terms of the way how the numbers are um, uh, presented. But again, just look at. The left side is for um, females, the right side is for uh, males. And when you look at, just at the, at the left column, we have here 
here, again, the, the left is with this bridging course and the right is without bridging course. And the green, um, you know, the, the first line is all the um, students who started in 2016, the next line is 2017, then 18, then 19. And it is it shows the study progress. It's of, of, I, mean, I don't know what your experience is. Uh, a normally, a bachelor course is about six semesters, uh, three years. Most of our students take five to six years. Yeah? So that means when I look um, at the uh, in the in the last row at the uh, students starting in 2019, almost none have finished in in 22. But when you look at the for example, the first row, 2016, uh, is uh, half of them, more than half of them, um, have finished when they have done the bridging course. Without doing the bridging course, uh, they are just uh, less than 20% who have finished. Again, of course, you can say doing the bridging course means these are the students who are more engaged. But we all also think that, you know, Having this bridging course also helps the students to get to know others who are in the same situation. So a kind of a hidden agenda of this bridging course is that you have a kind of a network of peers from the very beginning on, which also might help to, um, uh, to do your studies. Um, so this were the program for kind of um, attracting. So it's mainly uh, our school programs, uh, all our workshops and, and, and the bridging course. Um, concerning retaining the students, um, as I said, here it gets a bit kind of more on the lightweight uh, area. What we provide is uh, we provide especially um, special grants for female master students to become um, what we call um, res research assistant, but at the at the master level, yeah, they have not finished their studies, so not they haven't finished their their master. They, they are not teaching assistants, so they are not kind of um, um, they don't have to support uh, special uh, courses, but they have really uh, up to twenty hour per um, uh, per week. They are kind of um, paid and, and attached to a research unit where they can do their master, where they kind of participate in the research work to just to, to get them um, interested in, in, the, in research and also uh, perhaps to get, them, to get them interested in doing um, a PhD after they have finished their masters. Um, we also uh, provide scholarships for taking this kind of, also not only this, but again, general female master students to conferences. In fact, this is a, 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 a measure which I got to know the first time in Paderborn, uh, within a special collaborate, collaborate, excuse me, collaborative research program, uh, where also uh, Gregor Engels was involved. And I was really fond of this. and kind of came home and said, we have to do the same. Uh, and this is quite, you can say what is certified scholarships in, in four years, but at, at least it, uh, um, it, 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 what we have learned is that the, the female students get really interested um, in, in the topic. I, as I'm sitting here, I can't tell you how many of them um, this I didn't follow up the statistics have started uh, a PhD, but at least we I think we have shown them uh, how um, kind of how research um, might be exciting and uh, how research works. Um, we have special um, scholarships from uh, um, supported by Siemens Austria for our kind of high potential female students. And um, as already said, in the doctoral colleges, we have introduced this um, female quota. Um, when they are doing their PhD, um, we have programs for, you know, sending them to university, uh, to, excuse me, to, um, and also doing internships at other places, but sending them to conferences, they can ask for uh, financial support. And, uh, 
we had special uh, postdoc position for female scientists and we have now the special positions for assistant professorships as I already um, mentioned before. Um, and last but not least, uh, kind of this uh, fourth um, um, kind of uh, phase in this um, in the life cycle of a, a female or of general of, of, of researchers is I think also doing the sensitization. So get, getting um, um, be, be, being made aware of the situation, and we had. Uh, special gender awareness workshops um, taking place. And I have to say here, the willingness of my colleagues to attend these workshops is really limited. So there we would need much more um, yeah, nudging, I would say to a certain extent, which I haven't done, uh, I have to say, um, yeah, due to, you know, other, um, other priorities also. Yeah? Um, the same holds true for guest professorships. Um, here we are really, we, we, we could do much better um, concerning um, female party as a female kind of a ratio of our guest professors because we have every year um, something like uh, six, seven guest professors and um, it was only last semester that we had two um, female guest professors, but normally we are here quite bad. Also here, I mean, this again, what it, what it shows is that if you don't, um, if you don't provide this quota, if you don't force the people to think of, for example, female colleagues uh, being invited, um, if you don't have certain measures in place, it's still that kind of the male take it all. Yeah? Um, what we have also in place is that for, um, um, for being hired as a full professor since uh, winter term 21, there uh, are certain gender competences which have to be kind of um, uh, kind of shown by our um, by our uh, applicants. Now, when you ask me how to how to measure this. It's really, you know, in the discussion during the hiring process, in the question answering session, um, that this is a topic, but at least it has to be a topic. Eh? Everybody, uh, every applicant is asked uh, if he or she has um, any ideas, has already experienced, uh, what are the quotas in their group, and, and so on. So this uh, is more the sidestep, which I leave now apart. You get the um, slides anyway. Uh, perhaps to, to finish up is really what, what have we learned? Yeah? And as I was mentioning at the beginning, yeah, as our huge competitor, at least in Austria, is still the conservative society, home school culture. So we still have to kind of work against this um, skepticism of um, towards technology, natural science. Uh, second, what I also already mentioned is really the mindset. We really have to almost force to a certain extent our female students to uh, accept certain uh, supportive measures. Yeah? So we had, again, it's really a couple of years, but we had an opinion poll uh, about um, among our um, female uh, business informatics computer science students, and there 27% uh, were in favor of uh, female support measures, but it means 73 were against it. Yeah? And this is really, um, this has, uh, we, we have to work against this number because uh, it only shows that, you know, uh, females think they are they don't want to be treated especially because they are afraid that they are then perhaps even um, looked in a negative way um, uh, on them uh, compared to our male colleagues who you know who take everything what they get um, the next thing is learn from the best yeah there are so many examples meanwhile from 
like uh, Carnegie Mellon University, Harvey Mudd, Edinburgh, Bamberg, when you know them. This is was really, I think this is one of the best thing what uh, Informatics Europe could have done is really providing this um, Minerva Award. And by this, uh, first of all, showing, demonstrating and, and exhibiting all the good examples uh, and also putting them in front of the curtain. Yeah? Um, we have to look at our curricula. Uh, so we have done this in, in the first uh, year. We have, ex uh, for example, introduced a special course on um, computational thinking in the first semester. So next to, you know, introduction programming and algorithms and data, data structures and algebra. They also have this course where they just get to know what does it mean uh, solving a problem? What what kind of, uh, you know, user experiences do exist? Uh, what is a computer, how is computer science changing our society uh, and so on? And um, we have to teach the teacher in the schools. This is really, at least in Austria, I think a, a, a huge problem is that the um, reputation of teachers in schools is not very good, which is really a pity because I think they are teaching our future. Yeah? They are educating our future. And uh, when I was in Finland, I was it was I got, had really an eye opener because there I've heard, okay, our best people have to become teacher because they are teaching the future. And at least in Austria, it's sometimes, and it's, there are a lot of engaged and very good teachers, but their reputation in general they, uh, they have in the society is um, kind of not, not what they would really deserve. And I think at this level, we really have to change also. Also in the sense, like in computer science, yeah, there is this um, kind of this understanding, this mindset. If you are good in computer science, you do the real study, the real curriculum. And if you are not as good, you do the, the teacher curriculum, which is really weird. Yeah? As I could almost say it should be the other way around. So, um, so teaching and, and schools is an, an, an own topic. Yeah? What we need is role models. And I think here we have excelled. Again, I guess this was the reason why we got the Minerva Award. Since we have quite a few full professors now, and we have all these assistant professors, this is really something where um, we, we can show to our students that we have, you know, at, at all career levels, we have males and females. Yeah? Um, they are worthy of support, as I already said. And was also said is really this sustainability and sustainability not only in the terms of CO2 reduction but female empowerment. Yeah? We really have to continue uh, supporting our um, uh, different female support measures and this needs resources, yeah? money and human uh, resources. At TU level, uh, one of the best things, and this is not uh, a merit to the, our faculty, but it's a merit to uh, the whole TU Wien, is really the kindergarten. I think, uh, and this for all levels, also PhD students, postdocs, but especially assistant professor level, yeah, you need a very flexible um, childcare so that you don't have to um, worry if, uh, you know, when you have a later meeting, when you have an earlier meeting, that uh, you have problems with uh, with childcare. Quite often, our assistant professors are coming from all over the world, so they don't have family uh, in their vicinity, and they really need this um, childcare support. So I, I always finish my uh, this kind of presentations with um, the yeah. For me, it's really a, a hero. Uh, um, with Christiane Nüsslein Vollhardt. Uh, she got the Nobel Prize in uh, Physiology and Medicine in 95. And she has devoted a huge part of her um, uh, Nobel Prize money to uh, promote female scientists with uh, children. Also, she has devoted the money for childcare for female scientists. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Gerti. A lot of applause you can't hear, but it is there. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. I, of course, I can have some, some questions to you, but maybe somebody in the audience uh, would also like to ask Gerti something. I just stop now here. Yeah. Okay, there's a little. Uh, but I can put it up again if it's necessary. Okay, thank you, Anna. Anna is a great talk, Gerti. Um, I support. Hi, Anna. <laughs> So you know Anna? Yeah, of course. She has uh, visited us a couple of weeks ago. Okay, uh, very good. Anna, do you still have questions to get here or you know everything? Did you hear me, Anna? Uh, no, sorry. Okay, my question was to you uh, whether you still have a question to get here or you know everything. <laughs> I don't have any more questions. Just, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Gerti for the talk because it was very, very interesting. And even if I spent some time with, with her in Vienna now, I learned new things. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, maybe uh, Gerti, uh, we have a few minutes and I really have a lot of uh, maybe also interesting questions. So we, of course, everybody is thinking about uh, how you can improve the situation. And uh, a few days ago, I was in discussion with the industry and there um, we spoke about this, what we call a dual study. A dual study is that you maybe first, after Abitur, you go for one year really in industry and you do a kind of uh, yeah, education and you even can get a, a degree at the end, but you're really um, within the company for mm -hmm. some, some time. And when I also spoke several times at schools, I got the impression that especially women like to have such a let's say, organized environment. <laughs> they don't go to universities, they don't know whether they will have a job later on or not. So here they even get money, uh, something like, let's say, 1,000 euro per month. And, um, and the benefit also is that they see immediately that when we are studying computer science, this has some benefit and we can do something. And there's some, mm -hmm. uh, what I can do with my hands, let's say, what I really, uh, yeah. And um, I was thinking about, um, because I got this feedback by women, no, we don't go to the university. We like um, to do this dual program. And dual program it means that you also do a bachelor and then mm -hmm. in parallel. And um, maybe this could be, I don't know whether you, uh, you thought about this, that this kind of uh, combining uh, the real life <laughs> with the ivory tower of academia. Mm -hmm. Did you think about this or not, not yet? No. I, ha I haven't thought about this, uh, mm -hmm. um, honestly, but um, I. Uh, what, what I uh, fully agree is that uh, females normally, perhaps also based on their kind of, um, you know, at their education and what their family expect, families expect from them, uh, they uh, often ask after the, you know, what is, um, the, the, they don't only do something, you know, because like more in a, um, uh, you know, gaming uh, like way, but they really ask what is the, uh, is there a special um, usage uh, of that what I'm doing? And um, man, I can imagine that, um, yeah, you know, when, when, when enterprises uh, offer this kind of positions that this is uh, attractive for females because then they see immediately are, uh, they, they have their position, they get some money. Uh, what I would be very careful is that, you know, that uh, um, the, the industry is not uh, um, ausnutzen, that they are not uh, taking everything from, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, from, from, from uh, the students and they, they don't let them enough, uh, give them enough time for, for uh, studying. Yeah? Because also now, I have to say, we have really the problem that most of our students are working mm -hmm. and it's mainly that uh, they are more and more working and doing less and less for their um, study program. But we didn't have, we had, we had um, a long, since many years, we had this uh, kind of cooperative study with Siemens and uh, the yeah. Autos. And uh, so they took care, really care that the students finish within three or four years because they are this paying and, and then uh, um, they gave them enough time. Um, so, but it was only an idea. Um, and another question I have, because um, nobody is uh, asking at the moment. Um, so when I speak to some of our, let's say, researchers in gender, 
they quite often tell me, look at your advertisements of professorship positions. Maybe also look at the, how do you describe here's a computer science study. It is really technology centric. It's not at all human centric. So you don't speak about the humans. And uh, so you know about Paderborn and we had the discussion here to have a replacement of an open professorship position. Then there was the question, do we operating systems or human computer interaction? Mm -hmm. And all my colleagues decided for operating systems. And I say, are you crazy? Nowadays, all the systems we are using are connected to, to humans. So we need an HCI person. But um, I think we make here also many mistakes in our computer science departments that we uh, yeah, don't uh, open our study program mm -hmm. To these soft topics, mm -hmm. soft doesn't mean negative soft, but oh. to the uh, psychological, sociological, maybe even political um, mm -hmm. uh, issues, to show the students that you do not only learn programming, <laughs> you learn also about the impact of computer science within this mm -hmm. world. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, so I think we have really to uh, to to think about our our curricula. You also said let's uh, adapt the curricula, but in this way that we are more attractive. Yeah, uh, for the people who do not only want to program, not, not yeah. hacking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and even those, even even for those who do want to program, they should also know that you know that there are certain values which they have to also kind of fulfill when they program. You know, transparency yeah. of algorithms, for example, now and accountability, and I mean all this. Um, what now is called ethical issues in computer science. Yeah? Yeah. We, when we, 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 we might be still, uh, still hardcore technicians, but we, we have to take these issues into account. Like, you know, when you are a, a physician nowadays, you also have to think of, and you are trained also um, concerning ethical issues in, in, in um, your medical treatment. Yeah? Yeah. The same holds true also for other, uh, for our subject. Yeah, exactly. Maybe one last remark, you spoke about these bridging courses and that um, it has a positive impact on, on the study. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit funny study a few days ago, I saw it. It was about, let's assume that you are a student and you go every second evening to a party or you are a student who go never to a party. And then, the question, and then the question was, uh, who finished study earlier? And, um, and the answer is, or the uh, um, result was that those people who go every evening, every second evening to a party, maybe even drink a lot of alcohol, finished their study uh, faster than those who are sitting alone in their room and uh, yeah. in no social context. Because in this um, yeah, party, they spoke a lot about the subject and their uh, much better understood uh, how, how everything is related. And they also were, uh, yeah, had better networks and uh, yeah, they learned how exactly. to behave in social networks. So this means uh, go to parties, get it, drink more, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a more happy life. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is a good advice. But as I said, our hidden agenda is really providing them the network. Yeah. Exactly. I also think that really one huge problem is that when you enter this, <laughs> big university and you are kind of alone and sit in a, yeah. at least at the beginning, still we have this uh, huge courses with a couple of hundreds of students. Also post Corona, we have it. Uh, you are kind of lost. Yeah? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, here the party helps. Yeah. And the reason also is that um, when you look at um, appreciation of our profession, so we get rewards for good publications, uh, for a lot of funding material, but still only a little uh, uh, rewards for good teaching. So the Aminerva mm -hmm. Award is one uh, yeah, mm -hmm. a try of uh, Informatics Europe, but still, uh, if you apply for another position, first yeah, they ask you how many journals and age index and so on. Mm -hmm. And they ask you, did you also do some teaching and so on, yeah. Okay. I totally, Let totally me, agree. Uh, um, Anna, you still have no question? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Okay, so nobody is there with any question. Um, I think uh, because now it's six o'clock, so I will finish now. Um, Getty, uh, I was really happy uh, to be allowed to listen to you because <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. And um, maybe you do not know, but this will be recorded and uh, somehow then brought on YouTube. So and uh, in, in 30 years, we can look at it. And say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, in this sense, uh, let me thank you again, Gerti. Let me thank, um, thank you for the uh, all the people in the audience. Um, um, at least a few have been here, I'm happy. 
And uh, but this will be seen later by other people the, the whole presentation. So thank you again, and hope to see you again soon. All of you, in particular, Gerti. Okay. okay. Bye bye, Gerti. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All together. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor.